You take those two right turns, and when they make the final turn, you can begin to hear the crowd and the noise of the open end of the stadium. Here it is, the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. All right, Clemson family, another episode of Two Right Turns. I'm bringing you three great guests again. I like to let everybody introduce themselves because, like, you know, you can set up your intro however you want. If you want to give yourself the good old, like, Michael Jordan intro, if you want to pad the intro with some other stats that no one, you know, knew before, this is your opportunity to shine. The mic is on. Who wants to go first? I volunteer, Megan. Me too. Okay, I'll go first. My name is Megan Turka. I am the director of nutrition here. This is my second season, and I'm excited to be here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wade Woodaz. Um, I play linebacker here from Tampa, Florida. Uh, my name's Sammy Brown. I'm a mid year freshman, and I'm from Commerce, Georgia. So let's get loose, all right? Um, I'm not really sure how we're going to get you two loose in suits. What are you talking about? You look great. Did did someone tell you you were interviewing for a job or something? This is just casual. This is just what you do. I wear this every day. Oh, okay. Let's talk about the socks. You like them? I. They are interesting. Do you know, is that Chucky? It is yeah, Chucky, Chucky for sure. Give us the backstory because we're gonna try to not make it creepy. Uh, my mom got them for me for Christmas. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because you obviously like Chucky, or where does this come from? Is it rooted in something we should know? Is this like your favorite movie or something? No, nah, I just think we should keep it mysterious. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna answer why. Okay, they were probably on clearance. <laughs> that, that, that's probably the real reason, yeah. <laughs> it was a stocking stuff for the last minute. Yeah. She needed no, that's to throw what something else in there. <laughs> I got Chucky socks, and then I got Whoppers. Yeah, they're in the same package together. It was a weird combo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like a unique gift. Yeah. Okay? We're like, into <laughs> it. What is on your socks? Oh, I what got is, deer on my socks. Well, that's a lot more regular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you like to deer hunt or something? Duh. Is, <laughs> I'm. I'm. Do I look like I like the deer? Hunt? Like I mean, we cannot go off assumptions I here. I just needed to ask. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think you both look lovely. You Thank both you. look really. And Megan, you look Thanks. really wonderful. My suits at the dry cleaners. Well, I figured that they were just your security guards. Yep. So that's what I was going with, basically. But you have an awesome fit check. You can Thanks. give us a fit check as well. Well, Wade told me this morning that I should have worn neutrals. <laughs> You said that first, and I answered, all right, we'll give you the backstory. Yeah, the backstory. let's go. So I walk in to the bistro today to sit down and eat breakfast, and should I call them out too? Yeah. I sit down, <laughs> and Megan's the first one to say, what are you wearing? And I didn't like, say that. I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. What's wrong with this? Then, I, DJ, did you say the same thing? I think DJ said the same thing. He's like, that's what you're wearing? I was like, I- I'm sorry. I didn't know it was a crime to wear a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> he had on green. So I was like, oh. Green I is a if- normal color. Yeah, but you're filming a Clemson podcast. I figured you'd at least wear neutrals. I was like, oh. So then he's like, is that what you're wearing? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair question. And so how did we end up here with uh, the like... Secret service suits. She was just joking around and said, you guys should wear suits. And then, so I went on my phone so and texted did. Sammy. I was like, wear a suit. And so here we are. Yeah. You look great, guys. We're Thank being you. funny, but like, we love to see it. Thank okay. You. And it's different. Like, who's yeah. going to come on here in suits? Let's, not not a lot. Not anyone in the past. <laughs> I don't think so. That's the truth. <laughs> We've right. seen a lot of flops. <clears throat> mm-hmm. We've seen you know, straight from workouts. We've seen some fitty fits. Peter Woods came like ready to go. Chains. And then we have the suit dudes. I love it. I love it. Some slight. Yeah, just real slight slight work. Real easy like, you know, a little glimpse of what we'll get in for game day, Mm -hmm. I guess, later in the season. 
we love to see it. We love a good fit check at, <laughs> at the beginning of this thing. Let's let's keep rolling it and keeping it light because we had a little discussion about Step Brothers before the cameras started rolling. And so I just want to know collectively from the group, everybody will get a chance to go, what's your favorite like movie quote? But it's got to be one that you use in in your life pretty regularly. Like we all have something that we quote like for no reason. You don't? I'm so bad with movies. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> like I could watch a movie last night and you'd be like, oh, d- have you ever seen this movie? I'd be like, no. no. You don't I, have anything I, from your childhood that you quote? Megan. It's it's sad. We I are really so concerned. I don't I can't think of a if someone's like, what's your favorite movie? I don't even have a favorite movie. Oh, you don't yeah. have a favorite movie. I like Ted because I'm from Massachusetts, so it's like a talking teddy bear <laughs> from Massachusetts. <Right>. Megan, <laughs> there has got. I mean, you could have at least hit us with like the Lion King. I mean, no, something. I don't like animation. Bro, wow. Okay, yeah. well, it doesn't even look animated anymore. I know. Well, I just true. don't like like make believe stuff like that. I don't make know. believe. It's not make believe. Serious. They're real animals. So I guess Ted is my favorite movie. <laughs> Ted, Ted, what we believe? <laughs> <What? laughs> a talking so you don't bear. like you don't like lions, but you like a talking teddy bear That's from Boston, yeah. From Boston, specifically Boston. Okay. We need a cup of well, we will take it because <laughs> yeah. ultimately she she came back around and was like, I did well, like, I guess it's I Ted. did like Will Ferrell movies though, like Kicking yeah. and Screaming and Elf is a classic. So I do did grow up with the Will Ferrell movies. I'll Talladega give you that. Nights. Talladega Nights might be the funniest movie I've ever yes. watched. Yes. Yeah. What do we do with my hands? I, uh, you don't remember? <laughs> she doesn't remember. It's fine. Okay, we're moving on. Because, <laughs> Wade, you got to have a movie. Uh, I know. What's the? What are you quoting, like, often in your life? What am I quoting often? Oh, I can't answer that. <laughs> it's not a movie, but Wade does a voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to go there. I knew it. Wade has a voice that he likes to do. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I can't. I'm under pressure now. So he's, Sammy knows the voice. I'm not doing it either. <laughs> See, no. He was about to do it. <laughs> you can come back to it. If yeah. you need to get warmed up with telling yeah. us your favorite movie quote, then you can like roll into the voice. It's, it's okay. Um, favorite movie. I'm not going to lie. I watch like the same probably 10 movies repeatedly. Yeah. And I don't like ever step out of my comfort zone with movies. I don't know why. I think it's because like my like YouTube TV is broken for some reason because I'm not home. Okay. So then I like can't watch any movies. But and then my Netflix doesn't work either because you know when you're like away. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Um, favorite movie though, probably The Lion King actually. The the animated or the, yeah, the remade OG, one. The, OG the, one. The, the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I, it's classic. We actually, when I was a kid. My parents got on this interesting turn where they wanted to go see theater, like live plays. So we went and saw The Lion King one time. Yeah, it's amazing on Broadway. Yeah, that's yeah. And then we saw uh, Les Miserables. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was probably about ten, and my younger brother was about eight. Yeah, we were not big you fans. Didn't, you we didn't we haven't been one. back since. Okay. Yeah. Les Mis is intense for a 10-year-old. Yeah, yeah, I had no clue what was going on. Okay, that's yeah. all right. But The Lion King, Lion, we got yeah, that. Yeah, Lion okay. King's my favorite. Yeah. All right, what you got? It's going to be good, I feel Favorite like. movie? Honestly, probably Talladega Nights, to be honest. Okay, favorite quote from the movie? Top, uh, I top three. I don't know what to do with my hands. I gave no, that the, one to the you, scene, on. No, the scene where... It's Ricky and Bobby and the wife and the grandpa and the two kids at dinner is the funniest oh, yeah. scene oh, yeah, that's ever. Good. Megan, <laughs> we'll catch you up later when we ask you to rewatch it. Yeah, give me yes. a movie that I should watch. G.I. Joe Retaliation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought we were going to stick with the Talladega Nights, but <laughs> we, apparently I like, not. I like the movie Dinner for Schmucks. Have you seen that one? I have, I think. That one, I just remember. It's all coming oh, back to Hangover, you know. you know, just funny movies like that. Okay, so you like comedies is yeah. what we've what we've come mm-hmm. back to. All right, well, we love that for you. Let's talk a little, let's, let's get in it, into it a little bit more with Megan over here. All right, because w- what we do know about you now is that you don't like animated movies. Totally fine. We're not judging you a little bit, red flag, but it's fine. <laughs> um, but Megan, yes. you kind of have a little bit of like 
a homegrown, if you will, story, graduated from Clemson. You talk about being here two years now. Mm -hmm. You've completely drank the Kool-Aid. At this point, you are making the Kool-Aid. Yes. Um, Give us a little bit of like the best parts of graduating from here, but now literally being a part of this as a staff member. Like what, what has that been like for you? Yeah, it's been so great and so full circle. I started working here as a student worker my sophomore year and then working here with football really made me realize that this is what I want to do for a living. And I went on to grad school somewhere else. And then I went, I moved to Houston for my dietetic internship. And then I was back in Georgia um, for my first full-time job. And then I was at Miami for my first director job after that. And then um, was able to come back here and run the program. And it's been so great, especially seeing other places. And I always say like Clemson was my first love and like nothing is ever really the same as Clemson. And so it's been so great to come back now and be able to run the program and um, be with the guys. And it's been so great. Obviously, you've gotten to learn a lot along that journey about the way that you would want to run your own program and now having that opportunity. Like, what was the one thing that you said, when I get a chance to do this on my own, this is the way that I'm going to do it? What was that for you? Yeah, I think I really like to run my program relationship driven with the guys. So um, I spend most of my time in the bistro during the meals. And um, I'm really big on individualization. So I believe that you know, everyone's on the same team, people are in the same position group, but every single person on this team is going to have a different goal. Everyone has a different starting point. They're all raised differently, come from different areas. So really tailoring um, to exactly what each individual person needs and meeting them where they're at and then coming up with specific goals for every person. So whether that's body weight goals, body composition goals, or even just eating more fruits and vegetables. I had a guy come in when I was here. He's a junior and he's never had a salad in his life here. So we walked the line together. We made a salad. And then that next week he came up to me at lunch and was like, I made a salad myself. And just like those moments like that, where it might seem so small, you know, but for someone like that's a huge deal for them going three years without having a salad and then for them to be able to do that on their own. So, um, you know, and really just getting to know them and their personal lives and stuff like that in any way can help them. It's never a dull moment in the Bistro, that's for I sure. I can believe that wholeheartedly. Is Mallory Nichols one of your girls? Yeah. So she started out on Blender number one. I think it was. It's my joke for her that she was like Blender number one. Yeah. And now she's actually she's our like new blender. graduate assistant. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to you, Shout Mallory. Shout out Mallory. She's From the Blender best. number one to a GA. Yes. Good for you. I'm going to let you guys love on Megan and her team for a little bit because she just talked about helping somebody learn how to make a salad. It sounds funny, but like it's it's bigger in the grand scheme of things. What would you point out specifically? You've got a chance to sit here and look her in the eye and say what she and her team has been able to help you with when it comes to your nutrition and preparing your body and your mind and fueling yourself in a way that gets you ready for <laughs> all the things that you deal with as Clemson football players, what would you say to Megan? Well, I feel like I've got to experience more time with her being here for two years now. Um, And for me, she's helped me tremendously um, because, like, after my freshman year was when Megan got here. And so it was last January, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is when I was a little pipsqueak. I had yet (laughs) to put on any weight or anything of that nature. So it's been a journey for sure. Uh, I was probably around like 200 pounds. We can go back and look at all my DEXA scans. And now I'm sitting here at 230. But what they really helped me with, well, they're available all times of, of all times of the day. Like I could call Megan at 11 p.m. Like I'm not going to actually do this, but I, if I want, if I had to, you know, Megan, like I'm, I need, I'm starving. I need something to eat and I don't want to eat McDonald's. What do I do? And she'll be there as a resource to help me out. And then the entire nutrition staff, we can walk into the weight room any time of the day and go to the fuel bar and like, can I get a glass of Pinot kombucha? And they'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> They'll be there to get one. And so I guess just them being available all the time and constantly being a resource is what helps us out the most. Uh, yeah, I'll add on to that. Like, 
I think she's setting us up for good habits in life with just eating good meals because we've got like unlimited amount of food at the bistro and we could just go pig out and gain 30 pounds of fat. But she's setting us up with good habits now so that later in life that we can be successful. Right. So I talked to some guys from the O-Line group and they do the grill and chill and apparently they're like master chefs, apparently. They like know how to do it. They know how to cook it up. So I need to know from you guys, what is your like go-to... I know how to cook this. If Megan and I are coming over for dinner, we're going to eat. What are you preparing for us? And it's got to be good. I mean, like, what's your number one They dish? both actually cook a lot. A lot. Whenever people cook, they'll send me meals or videos. And, and both of them are, are pretty good chefs. Mm. Okay. Well, so what's uh, the top meal? First off, I was really disappointed that me and Watson didn't get Crush King when we made our own sushi before the sushi demo. E- like, we even had a sushi mm. demo. I was like, oh, did you get sushi-grade salmon? And they're like, no, we just got salmon from Publix. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was like build your own s- sushi, but it was, like, really good, and it looked really good. Good. Yeah, no, it was, they did, they made their own sushi. And then last week we had a sushi cooking demo. So shout out you and Watson. So are you, you're making a sushi? I, I mean, we can make sushi or I, I make a monster steak. I can't even lie. Okay. Yeah, All I right. would say if you guys are coming over, I would definitely cook steak, asparagus, even, and then either mashed potatoes or mac and cheese. And then. You know, the Texas toast? I'm a sucker for that Texas toast. Okay. (laughs) But one time Wade made a steak, and it was the seasoning that he put on it. So we have our Fueling Clemson football Instagram, so I'll post (laughs) stuff that they make, and sometimes I'll do, like, a poll, and people will vote, like, which one's Mm -hmm. the best. And Wade got roasted for his steak because of the seasoning he put on. Everyone commented, and or, like, guys on the team, you know, they just want to— roast people but um they're like oh his steak looks ashy like it looks like oh, it bur- looks ashy. like it, it looks like it's burnt to a crisp and he was like it's the seasoning it, everyone on this team when it comes to cooking they claim they're the best chef yeah. ever and then they are the biggest hater yeah for yeah they're like i'm getting heated thinking about this right who's now. the ultimate hater Who ryan lithica Ty- or tyler tyler venables tyler venables i can see that yeah and it'll never be like public on the comments. It'll always be like they'll slide up yeah. on it and then I'll uh-huh. I'll screenshot it and send yeah, it. Yeah, you to won't them. even like if you're gonna say it, say it say to it me with your chest. Yes, yes, Tyler. Yes, yes, He's Tyler. Probably somewhere if you're in watching the- this, <laughs> yeah. Tyler, I'm talking about you. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably somewhere commenting that in some like Batman suit or something. Yeah, he probably like, is. Yeah, like hater. in his bat cave. Ultimate hater. <laughs> Come on. All right, let's talk a little bit of football. Let's let's like switch gears. We're we're gonna like roll our way real calmly into it. I wanna talk about jersey numbers though first. Okay. Uh, look, you ready? <laughs> Go ahead. We'll let you pop it off, Sammy, because you chose number forty seven. Give I know that there's a story. Give us a story. Uh honestly there's not that good of a story besides the fact that it's freaking James Skalski and you can't you can't go wrong being 47, but I didn't have a wide a range of numbers I could choose from. But when I saw 47, I felt like I had to take it. So what does that give you, right? Because you, you brought him up. So obviously a legacy and a name that, you know, was attached to that number. What does that give you as a player um, to make sure that you're bringing your best to the game wearing that 47? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely like you have to live up to that standard. Like the standard of 47 is what James Galski put out on the field. So I feel like when I wear that number, I have to live up to that standard. What about you? 17. Is there a story behind 17? I Yeah, there's a – well, first of all, Coach Sweeney just sent me a list of numbers. Uh, and my sister currently wears 17. She's graduating in about two weeks. Um, she recently hit the portal, so good luck to you. <laughs> um, and then my dad that was his number for baseball my dad was a pitcher in college um, and he wore 17 as well that's a family affair right. 17 is it's got a long lineage yeah. yep. in the fam yeah. I love that yeah. that's a great story I really love that a- another thing that I think um, you know from a fan's perspective is when you think about the linebacker position you know, it's often known as the quarterback of the defense. I mean, you've you've talked about players who've come before you guys who really have lived up to that sort of phrase and, and that sort of thing. Talk a little bit about the responsibility that you feel 
on the field as a linebacker, some of the other guys that you have in that position with you and kind of where where you feel like your leadership really shines? I feel like for me, my leadership shines. I feel like it shines in the weight room. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's when I'm mm-hmm. most comfortable to be vocal. And for some reason, I tend to get vocal whenever we're doing conditioning. I don't know if I just I don't know. I feel like that's a good time to speak because it's coming from the heart. Everyone is tired and everybody's looking for something maybe to pick them up or a little extra motivation. So I feel like that's when it's easiest for me to lead. Um, And then out there on the field, I would say I focus more on assignment. And then obviously you got get hyped up and stuff like that. Bring, bring, get hyped up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like bring energy to the field. Um, but yeah, that's mainly it. The conditioning aspect, I would say. Well, and I can speak to Wade too, just being here. This is my second season, but even seeing him evolve since mm-hmm. I came in, you know, I feel like with the weight that he put on, he started coming more out of his shell. And sometimes we'll just be in the bistro and he'll come up behind someone and just like scream at the top of his lungs or he'll just like (laughs) run up the stairs and just like scream. And like he has such a presence to him and like it's like like infectious. Thanks, Meg. You're welcome. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think I get most vocal when we're doing heavy singles in the weight room. (laughs) That's probably one of the more fun times in the weight room or in general here especially on squats. I love to squat and I love when other people hit heavy squats. So it definitely gets really loud from the linebackers, running backs and tight ends when there's a lot of weight on the bar. I can feel that. But Megan, you have to like take that into account as well, right? So it's, it's about making sure that whatever they're eating allows them to be able to do what they're doing in the weight room. And of course, be able to see those results, Mm -hmm. be it on the scale, be it, you know, physicality, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk a little bit about how you manage to work with the other staff and making sure that these guys are meeting the goals, um, both individually, but also collectively as a team. Yeah, so this is definitely the most collaborative place I've ever been, whether that's with the performance staff or the coaches or even the guys themselves. So um, each guy has their own goal weight. So I'll work with um, their specific strength coaches and then also the coaches and come up with a certain goal weight for each guy. And then I'll text the guys individually so they are aware of their goal weights as well. Um, So whether that's working with strength or their coaches, I have a great relationship with all the coaches of – like, hey, like so-and-so, they're light today or they're heavy today, and then kind of coming up with goals across different areas of, like, how we can attack that, whether someone needs to lose weight or gain weight or, um, like, even if they're, like, oh, they're sluggish or whatever, then meeting with them, all right, so are we eating before we're lifting or are you hydrating enough or kind of getting to the root of the problem and then addressing it there, and, you know, that can affect – if they're fueling properly that or not properly, that can affect their lift, their practice. Um, we're there for practice on the sideline with Pedialyte and snacks. And I'm like, I feel like a mom with my little like fanny pack. I'm like <laughs> handing out applesauce and fruit snacks. And um, but yeah, it's 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 really great. And working with um, athletic training and sports science, and it's really really collaborative. And we're always talking to each other, communicating on how we can impact these guys the most. 